Welcome to Gut Talk TV by Deb, our YouTube channel focused on closing the communication and knowledge gaps in gut health. Please see our disclaimer and press the subscribe button below. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Yoon An. And I'm Dr. Jake Begun. We're Australian gastroenterologists. Today we are going to talk about low FODMAP diet, which is a very popular dietary management of our irritable bowel syndrome. And we've invited our dietitian Dwayne back to give us uh, some tints and tips with low FODMAP diets. Hi, I'm Dwayne and I'm an accredited practicing dietitian. So Dwayne, what is low FODMAP diet? Yeah, so the low FODMAP diet stands for fermentable oligo, dye and monosaccharides and polyols. Essentially, these are highly fermentable carbohydrates from a lot of our foods, which are poorly broken down and digested or absorbed, which can cause some um, unsensitive uh, symptoms for a lot of people with IBS. Mm -hmm. And so when we have uh, patients in our practice who have classic symptoms of IBS with bloating, maybe some diarrhea, um, but really bloating, uh, and we send them to you for uh, some education about a low FODMAP diet, what is it that you tell them uh, on how to start a low FODMAP diet? Yeah, so um, that's a really good point. So usually we, it's really important to try and get some support from a dietitian when trying to think or consider doing a night, uh, the low form of diet because um, it may be important just to make sure that the low form of diet may be appropriate for you. Um, but essentially what we might go through is talking about what the diet is and what it involves. It is quite lengthy and it's come into three phases. Um, and the purpose of it is just to try and identify the type of FODMAP groups that you may be sensitive to, the amounts you may be able to uh, tolerate, but also how we can make sure that you've got a more varied diet as well. Mm -hmm. And how, what's the first step that they should take when they're approaching low FODMAP? Yeah, so what we normally would do with the first phase um, is remove these uh, for highly for highly uh, fermentable carbohydrates or FODMAPs mm -hmm. from our diet temporarily for two to six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and the purpose of that is to try and get our tummy a little settled from all these, um, I guess, gut issues that you've been experiencing for a while. Um, the second phase involves um, reintroducing these foods into your diet um, in a very systematic way, one by one. Um, and this can be quite challenging for many people um, because it may cause some symptoms for them. <clears throat> what I do encourage is that they do try and seek some support from a dietitian to try and guide them through this process because they may be able to find and adapt to the process for them. The purpose of, the, of phase two is to try and identify the different format groups they may be sensitive to, but also identify the amount that may be causing them these symptoms as well. Sounds like that leads us into the phase three then. So what's the third phase of the FODMAP diet? Yeah, so the phase three is trying to, I guess, give you a better understanding of the FODMAP foods that you have been sensitive to from phase two, um, but also identify the amounts you may be able to tolerate without causing any of these symptoms as well. So what we will try and do is try to reintroduce the foods that we tolerate quite well to give us a more broad and expanded diet so we can enjoy a bit more on our diet as well, um, but also it may be helpful with improving our diet quality and even improving our gut microbiota as well. Mm -hmm. And it, as we mentioned over and over again, it is very important not to just search things on the website and restrict a lot of your diet because having a um, mixed diet is important, just finding the triggers for you. And if you find that really difficult, my own practice is um, avoiding garlic and onion and sometimes tomato, which was very common triggers for a lot of people. And they find that low FODMAT diet very helpful in improving their symptoms in about 70% of patients. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that the other thing that's important to mention is that it is very helpful to have some structure to your low FODMAP diet because it's very surprising to me every day about which foods are high in FODMAPs or not. It's not any rhyme or reason really. You really have to know the foods. Yeah. So when a dietitian comes in handy and nowadays in the internet age and apps, we have lots of tools to help us figure those things out as well. Definitely, I agree. Yeah, so it would be really useful just to use a resource from someone that's got experience with trying to implement the diet but also support you through the process as well. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, watching. I hope you found this episode useful. Don't forget to leave comments below and we'll happily answer any questions that we can and don't forget to press subscribe below. Bye now.